Good day, I'm Dr. Evony Lambito Alisa Devesa, and now we will going to discuss another inter interesting topic, okay? Interesting topic about children, okay? Children, um, it may be younger children, middle childhood, okay? Those who are in elementary years, in those who are adolescents. So, we actually have difficulty in dealing with children. A lot of parents are actually have difficulty with dealing with children especially if we don't understand what is happening and we don't understand or we are not aware on what the what are the things the right things to do or how to deal with these children who are having issues with their own um concerns okay okay so to help these children i want you to pay attention with regards to how to talk to children so they will listen and listen so kids will talk okay how to talk with children so they will listen and listen so children or kids will talk okay so first thing so first is to help with feelings okay we have to give them our full attention full attention with eye contact active listening okay we have to give their full uh, our full attention to them and then um, acknowledge those feelings and we actually have to name those uh, name those feelings okay we also have to give them their wishes in fantasy so here are the examples so as you can see in the demonstration uh, here if you are half listening to children and then when you give full attention okay okay i can hear you go on okay eric punch me so daddy do you hear me so i hit him back then he hit me again are you listening okay forget it okay so if we are actually half listening it actually discourages the children to talk more okay it can be discouraging to try to get through to someone who gives only lip service to listening okay so if we give our full attention like this we have an eye contact we are active listening it's much easier to tell your troubles to a parent who is really listening he doesn't have to say anything Often, a sympathetic silence is all a child needs, okay? So, sympathetic silence. So, another example. Instead of questions and advice, like, uh, somebody stole my new red pencil. Are you sure you didn't lose it? I didn't. It was on my desk when I went to the bathroom. Well, what do you expect if you leave your things lying around? Okay, here you give questions and advice. And then it's hard for a child to think clearly or constructively when someone is questioning, blaming, or advising. Okay, so acknowledge with the word, oh, mm, I see. Okay, for the demonstration, somebody stole my new red pencil. Oh, I left it on my desk when I went to the bathroom and somebody took it. Hmm, that's the third time I've had my pencil ripped off. Uh-huh. I know from now on when I leave the room, I'm going to hide my pencil in my desk. I see. There's a lot of help to be had from a simple oh um or i see words like these coupled with a caring attitude are invitations to a child to explore her own thoughts and feelings and possibly come up with her own solutions so that actually helps the child so another example instead of denying the feeling like this illustration my turtle is dead. He, he was alive this morning. No, you don't get so upset, honey. Don't cry. It's only a turtle. Mm, stop that. 
I'll buy you another turtle. Now you're being unreasonable. It's strange when we urge the child to push a bad feeling away. However, kindly, the child only seems to get more upset. So give the feeling a name. My turtle is dead. He was alive this morning. Oh no, what a shock. He was my friend. To lose a friend can hurt. I taught him to do tricks. You two had fun together. I fed him every day. You really cared about that turtle. Parents don't usually give this kind of response because they fear that by giving a name to the feeling, they'll make it worse. Just the opposite is true. The child who hears the words for what he is experiencing is deeply comforted. Someone has acknowledged his inner experience. So instead of explanation and logic like this illustration, I want my toasty crunchies. We don't have any deer. I want them. I want them. I just told you there aren't any in the house. No. Have some nifty crispies. Now you're acting like a baby. When children want something they can't have, adults usually respond with logical explanations of why they can't have it. Often, the harder we explain, the harder they protest. So give a child his wishes in fantasy. I want my toasty crunchies. Oh, I wish I had some in the house for you. I want them. I hear how much you were, want them. I wish I had them now. I wish I had the magic power to make a giant box appear. Well, maybe I'll have some nifty crispies. Oh, sometimes just having someone understand how much you want something makes reality easier to bear. Okay, so to engage cooperation, you have to actually describe, give information, say it with a word, talk about your feelings, and write a note. So here are the illustrations and examples. It's hard to do what needs to be done when people are telling you what's wrong with you. So you have to describe the problem. Okay, describe what you see. For example, the mother telling the child, Johnny, the water in the bathtub is getting close to the top. I see a rover pacing up and down near the door. The light is on in the bathroom. Or Jill, I need to make a phone call now. So that's example of describing instead of complaining and telling the child what's wrong with him or her okay so give information information is a lot easier to take than accusation so kids milk turns sour when it isn't refrigerated okay apple cores belong in the garbage when children are given information, they can usually figure out for themselves what needs to be done. Okay? Walls are not for writing on. Paper is for writing on. It would be really helpful if the table were set for dinner now. Say it with a word. Look at the contrast between the effect of a long paragraph and the effect of a single word. Okay, I've been asking and asking you kids to get into pajamas and all you've been doing is clowning around, blah, 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 blah. Okay, instead of, say it with the word, kids, pajama. Okay, Jamie, your lunch. Billy, the dog. Children dislike hearing lectures, sermons, and long explanations. For them, the shorter the reminder, the better. So talk about your feelings. 
make no comment about the child's character or personality. So instead of, stop that, you're a pain in the neck. Talk about your feelings like, I don't like having my sleeve pulled. Or, it bothers me when the screen door is left open. I don't want flies around the food. Talk about your feelings. I feel so frustrated when I start to say something and I can't finish it. I object to being told I have to do anything. What I'd like to hear is that I'm ready to go. Can you take me r now? It's possible to cooperate with someone who is expressing irritation or anger as long as you're not being attacked. Okay, sometimes nothing we say is as effective as the written word. Like for example, help, hairs in my drain give me a pain. Okay, before you turn this on, think have I done my homework? Have I practiced? Okay, um, shh, mommy and daddy are sleeping. Okay, uh, hi, come on in, love mom and dad. Okay, dear Sam, I know you're busy with sports and study, but the papers need tying, old buddy. Okay, toys away after play, love. So what are the effective ways to deal with the punishment if your child is actually misbehaving? So here are the examples that, you act, that actually helps in order for you to deal with children and even adolescents. So alternatives to punishment. Okay, point out a way to be helpful. For example, here in the illustration, it would be helpful if you picked out three big lemons for us. Or I don't like what's going on. It's disturbing for to shoppers when children run in the aisle. Okay, so that's one of the examples of um, alternatives to punishment. And then next is give a choice. Billy, no running here. Here are your choices. You can walk or you can sit in the cart. You decide. Or I see you decided to sit in the cart. Okay. So another one is to let him experience the consequences. Okay, um, I want to, uh, I want to go too, not today. Okay, uh, because I ran around in the store. You guessed it. Okay, I'm sorry. Give me another chance. There will be plenty of other chances. Okay, another one is to state your expectations. Okay, I expect when my tools are borrowed that they be retor returned promptly and in good condition. Okay, and the light coat of oil when you're finished will protect it for the future. Okay, so give a choice. Uh, you can borrow my tools and return them. You can give up the privilege of using them. You decide. So we also have problem solving skills. So these problem-solving skills actually helps children deal with their problems as an adult later on. So how can we um, help them do problem-solving? So here are the examples and illustrations. The first is to talk about the child's feelings and needs. I've been thinking that it probably isn't easy for you to leave your friends when you're having fun. Yeah. On the other hand, I worry when you're late. Okay, talk about your feelings and needs. That's step two. Okay, so next is uh, brainstorm to find a mutually agreeable solution. Like, let's put our heads together and see if we can come up with some ideas that would be good for both of us. And then write down all ideas without evaluating. Okay, I'll come home at 6.30 and you won't worry. Okay, and the next last one is to decide which suggestions you like, which you don't like, and which you plan to follow. Okay, cross out where you pick me up. Okay, now let's look at our list and see what we want to cross out and what we want to keep. Okay, how can we actually establish, how can we encourage autonomy? So when we say autonomy, the child actually makes a decision by his own or her own self okay she decides he decides okay that would actually help them to deal with their problems independently so give them a sense of autonomy so you will be more at ease later on with regards to how they deal with their own lives okay let children make choices 
So would you like to have a glass of juice or a whole? What would work best for you doing your practice before, dinner, or after? Okay, so let the child make a choice. And also show respect for a child's struggle. Show respect by, for example, here in this illustration, a jar can be hard to open sometimes. It helps if you tap the lid with a spoon. <laughs> Tying shoelaces takes a lot of fancy finger work. And uh, adding fractions can be hard. It's not easy to find the common denominator. And also, you can uh, avoid asking too many questions. Okay? Uh, too many questions can be experienced as an inv invasion of one's private life. Okay, uh, children will talk about what they want to talk about when they want to talk about it. Okay, remember that. So don't rush to answer questions. When children ask questions, they deserve the chance to explore the answer for themselves first. Okay, so you can ask, you wonder about that. Why does grandma visit us every week? So ask questions. Encourage children to use sources outside the home. So, let's check with the dentist and see what he thinks about chewing gum. When the child asks, all my friends are allowed to have gum, can you buy me gum? Okay, so another one is, how would you feel about asking the teacher? And then, don't take away hope. Okay, remember that. So, you're going to try out for the lead. That should be an experience. Okay, so instead of preparing children for disappointment, let them explore and experience. Okay, the last one is to how to free children with playing roles. Okay, here are the illustrations. So look for opportunities to show the child a new picture of himself or herself. Like, I like the way you told me that you made your point and there was no blame. Okay, with everything else uh, on your mind, you remembered to check the lost and found for your gloves. So, undependable, complainer, uh, mischievous, scatterbrain. Okay, put children in a situation where they can see themselves differently. So, avoid this. Okay, um, Tommy, please divide these peanuts so that each person gets a fair share. Okay, not being greedy. Okay, so another example is... Um, uh, let children over here you say something positive about them. He just held out his arm and went right on talking to the doctor and those shots can hurt too. Okay, so that's for example. And then next one here is model the behavior you'd like to see. Of course, we have to be a good role model. Okay, another one is be a storehouse for your child's special moments. Okay, why I remember the time you were three years old and I was looked locked out of the house and you climbed in the bedroom window, lowered yourself into the dresser, jumped down and ran to the door and let me in. Okay, so when the child behaves according to the old label, state your feelings and or your expectations. So as you can see here, um, the cookies were to be shared by the whole family. I expect you to be able to say no to yourself. You have to take me to the store. The way of that way of talking upsets me. Now you actually have learned something today. I hope you can share this and you can comment something you want to discuss in on my next video. Thank you for your time and God bless. Please subscribe. Bye.